Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. This week, I want to thank you for your continued feedback, all the likes, all the great comments. I check it out every day, and it really means a lot to me. So this week, I've got another story for you, three great launches, and another AWS book. So let's get started with my story. So I'm 15 years old. I'm really, really quiet, kind of a thoughtful person. My home situation is really unstable. My parents are in the process of separating and ultimately divorcing. We're moving a lot. I go to five different schools in the four final years of high school. Things are just really, really weird and uncertain. One weekend I see my dad and he gives me this great book all about the brand new Intel 8080 microprocessor. At this point, I've got some awareness of tech. I know that small computers are on the way. Super interested in this. So I read the entire book through a couple different times. I'm kind of famous at home at this point for reading under any possible circumstance. My mom catches me reading a book when I'm brushing my teeth or when I should be doing something else. But I've got this thirst for knowledge. I just have to keep learning. I, I do understand at this point that the small computer revolution is well underway. I'm lucky enough to join this club in Seattle called the Northwest Computer Club. I go to the city every week or every month whenever we met, and I can see this awesome tech world just starting to happen, but I'm just on the very, very periphery of it. I'm, I'm watching, I'm not in the middle. I really want my own computer. I just gotta be a part of this emerging tech world. Just a couple of small obstacles. I'm 15 years old and I've got no money. My only job is just very, very occasional babysitting. So I need a real summer job. Well, at the computer club, I met this guy, Steve, and we're still friends to this day. And one day he says, well, I just got hired as the manager of this brand new institution in Seattle called the Retail Computer Store. This was such a brand new concept that simply calling a place the Retail Computer Store was enough to, to set it apart. Steve was a great guy, and he understood that, that I was just desperate for access to actual hands-on time with the computer. So he said, well, Jeff, I got this great idea. You can, we'll call you the store janitor. We'll pay you the minimum wage, which was $2 and something at the time. But he kind of winked at me a bit, and we both understood this was just a trick to get me in the door, give me something to do, but ultimately to let me access the computers. To get from Mercer Island to Seattle, I had to take a couple different buses and I'd show up, I got my trusty knife and I was quickly led to this cavernous warehouse in the back of the store. This was this gigantic, really dark place. Kind of makes me think of the Indiana Jones warehouse. It was full of books and magazines and computers and computer add-ons and literature all in cardboard boxes. My only job was supposed to be open up those bo boxes, take it out of the, take everything out of the boxes, get it up on those shelves just as quickly as possible. The promise was get that all done. And then after you're done with that, then you can actually get some hands on time with all the computers. That was my real goal. That's what I really, really wanted to make happen. This was the dawn of the industry. And so stuff is just showing up at the back of this warehouse, just nonstop. No matter how quickly I slice open the boxes and put everything out on the shelves, I, I finish one box, two more show up. I'm just not actually making any progress. I'm so close to the action. I am feet away. We've got the warehouse. The back of the store has all these bookshelves. And then a few feet in front of that, there's all these great computers, switches and blinking lights and all this awesomeness, just feet out of reach. A couple of times a day, Steve comes back and he looks at all this inventory piling up and I can tell he's not super happy with my productivity, he encourages me to work harder and get this stuff done so I can go hands on. But little does he know, as he, I open up every one of these boxes, it looks really interesting inside. If it's a memory board, I start reading the how-to manual for, for how to set it up and make it work. If it's a magazine, it says, Read all about the brand new so-and-so, such-and-such on page 52. Well, I got to open up, read all about it. So I've kind of got this self-inflicted handicap here of just, I'm supposed to be just opening things up, but I'm really actually doing what we now say in Amazon terms. I'm, I'm doing a deep dive on all this. I'm a bit chastened and realize I need to put a little more energy into unpacking versus reading. So 
I come up with another plan. I, I very carefully start borrowing manuals and borrowing magazines to, and with the plan to read them on the bus, read them at school, read them at home, bring them back before anybody notices. I get really, really into this. So I had to take these two buses to get from the store back to home. And I was so into reading that in between buses, I would walk down the street with the magazine in front of me and just kind of knowing almost by rote where to go. When I get to the bus stop in the university district, every time I get there, the same bus was there. And I knew if I stepped onto that bus while I'm reading, I'd end up on Mercer Island. Really, really safe bet. Well, one day I must have shown up just a little bit later than usual, stepped on the bus there at the stop, because I didn't bother to even check the route number. I was just so engrossed in, in the tech. Stepped on the bus, still keep on reading. I, I look up, it's late on a Saturday night. It's actually really dark and I can see that I'm actually in a really bad part of Seattle all of a sudden. But you know what? I kept reading all that material. Every chance I get, I'm still brushing my teeth. I'm still and reading. I'm reading at the store. I'm reading at school. I'm not doing great in my classes because I'm always reading about tech. I have no friends, but I got to be the expert. I know the hardware. I know the software. I, I know the industry. I know all the cool people doing all this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? I'm super, super close to actually knowing what's going on here. So we had this one busy spring day at the store and it must've been, the weather must've been really good because the other employees that usually worked out front, they didn't show up. Steve is a little bit upset because Saturdays were a really busy day and we made most of our sales on Saturdays. So he said, you know, I'm a little bit desperate today, Jeff. So leave the warehouse behind and I'll come with me. I'll show you how to take care of customers out front. Sounds, sounds good to me. Customer shows up and the customer already has one memory board and he's about to spend a lot of money on a second one. He's got a question about it. And he, I'm, it's customer and Steve and me, we're all kind of there across the counter, asks his question in great detail. And Steve's like, oh, I'm, I'm not quite sure how to do that. I'm thinking back to my reading I did and I realize I, I know the answer, but a couple of things are actually in my way. First, if I say anything, my, my entire scheme of how I'm stealing this knowledge and borrowing all these, these materials and putting them back, that whole thing is gonna be come to light. That wasn't quite right what I was doing. But, but second, I, I was actually like super, super shy and it was really hard for me just to open my mouth and say something. I can see the customer is just not, the sale's not gonna happen unless I step in and I can't help myself. I wait for a pause in the conversation and I just blurt it out. I say, you know, at the bottom of that board, there, there's two little switches. If you set them properly, you're gonna be able to use both those memory cards in your system. Customer listens, understands right away, buys that memory board, goes away really happy. Things get a bit quiet. Steve gets this really serious look on his face. Uh, Jeff, we got to talk. And I'm thinking, uh, uh oh, that's the manager voice. I'm young, but I know the manager voice, the, the you're in trouble voice, right? We all know that, that voice we hear from our parents. I'm thinking I'm just about to be fired. And I'm thinking, well, I can try again at the Royal Fork Buffet. Maybe I've got some experience now. But he turns to me and he's got a big smile on his face and he, and, I, and then I thought, you know, maybe I showed him up. Maybe I made him look bad in front of the customer. But no, he's like, Jeff, that was awesome. How, how did you know all that? You, you saved the day. We, we sold this really expensive memory card. And I, I took a breath and I said, well, there's a reason I haven't actually been really productive. While you thought I was just opening up those boxes and stacking the materials, I've been kind of wasting my time actually reading what's inside. Um, really, really sorry about this. I'm, I'm going to be focused on my work. And he's like, he wouldn't even let me finish. He's like, Jeff, no way, no way. You did the absolute right thing. J just look at the results. You, you helped out our customer. We made a sale. Everybody walked away happy. And then he said, from now on, I need you out front. I need you with our customers. Wow. Kind of like a promotion. This, this was so cool. I got to actually enjoy speaking with our customers, all that knowledge I'd spent months and months kind of acquiring on the slide, I got to use that. 
it was now part of my official job to not just share what I had, but to continue to gain additional knowledge. The one thing that was super awesome, I still remember from back then, I, I was still, I was really young. I was probably unkempt. I probably had like a lot of, lot of hair, didn't pay a whole lot of attention to my appearance, but people would come in the store and they'd ask a question about any new product. The other employees figured this out too. And they would just send send the customers over to me because I, I knew what I was talking about. And I've never forgotten that lesson. A couple other things I kind of take from, from what I just told you. Really important to give young folks a, a chance. Uh, if you're already in a position of, of power, give those new folks a chance. If you're that young person and an opportunity comes your way, grab hold of it and milk it for all it's worth. The immediate value might not be obvious, but do the job you've been asked for. Do that job. Do it well. But look around and, and do even more. And also, if you can contribute to, to the success of whatever you're doing, don't be shy like I was. Speak up. Share what you know. Read. Dive deep. Always keep on learning. That's my story for you this week. All right. So let's jump into our launches. The first one is increased accessibility of the high memory EC2 instances. So do you have workloads that really need a lot of memory? I'm talking about beyond kilobytes or megabytes or gigabytes. How about multiple terabytes of memory? So we now have easy accessibility of EC2 high memory instances with six, nine, or even 12 terabytes of memory. This is just a huge amount. This is awesome for your memory bound workloads. The, the cool news is you can now get these as either on demand or via a savings plan. When I think of these instances, I kind of think of them as almost like deep sea monsters. They got huge amounts of everything. You've got up to 448 virtual CPUs. There's 100 gigabit per second networking. There's 38 gigabits per second of bandwidth to EBS, all powered by the AWS Nitro system. Again, super awesome for your in-memory workloads. They're also certified for the SAP Business Suite, for SAP Business Warehouse, and a whole bunch more SAP applications. These instances are now available to you both on demand and savings plan in four AWS regions, and you can read the AWS What's New to learn more. Um, oh, by the way, also tell me about the workloads that you'd like to put on these instances. Would love to hear more about that. Next launch, some more AWS local zones. So the local zones are designed to help us get select AWS services close to large centers of population, industry, and IT. Our customers run workloads like gaming, hybrid migrations, and then things like content creation for media and entertainment, all the kinds of things that need single digit millisecond latency between the end user and the processing. We've already got two local zones in Los Angeles, and the news is we've added three more in Boston, Miami, and Houston. It's super easy for you to get started with local zones. You simply enable them in the console, and then you can launch instances. There's currently four types of instances available probably add more over time. You can also create EBS volumes. You can create both EKS and ECS clusters. And from the parent zone, you can use AWS services like VPC and CloudFormation and CloudWatch. We're not nearly done yet. We're working on 12 more zones in the US for launch throughout the rest of 2021. We're also looking to expand elsewhere. Would love to see how you put these to use. To learn more about this, including some great customer stories, you can read my blog post. And last, a quick update to AWS organizations. So if you're not using this service, you really should be. The idea is you create an organization and then you add multiple AWS accounts. You get a whole lot of cool stuff in return. You get centralized management and control. You get consolidated billing. You get to group your accounts into things called OUs or organizational units. These OUs can then be put into a hierarchy. You can do some really powerful things like applying service control policies across all of the OUs. You can do it to individual OUs. These service control policies let you set the maximum level of permission for any, each and any one of the accounts in the organization. Now, when you hear organizations, they probably think, well, it's just me and a couple of my, my friends in our startup, so we're, we'll wait till we're an enterprise to start using this. Don't think like that. Get started early with organizations, and you'll thank me later. No charge to use. And so with all of this, what's new? Well, we've made the console experience even better. We've increased the navigation, made it easier for you to find and manipulate your accounts. We've also made it easier for you to perform tasks on your accounts. 
and we made it easy for you to find docs and other resources to help you get the most from organizations. As always, you can read the What's New to learn some more. Finally, I've got a great new book for you. This one is called the AWS Certified Machine Learning Specialty Certification Guide. I, I took a quick look through this and I really like it. On, on the surface, it's a wonderful guide to helping you to pass the exam on the first try, but there's a whole lot more. If you open it up, you're gonna find there's an in-depth look at a whole lot of the AWS machine learning services. The book starts out with a review of the fundamentals of machine learning, and then it goes into a lot of detail on each one of the services. It shows you what the service is all about, and it shows you how to use them. Lots and lots of details, lots of screenshots. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. Great for getting certified, but also for general purpose learning, so be sure to check it out. Now, that's all I've got for you for this week. I hope you enjoyed my story. Hope you enjoyed my launches. Be sure to check out the book. Remember from my story, give some young folks a chance. Keep on reading, keep on learning. Oh, as I mentioned earlier, I love your comments on YouTube. Keep them coming, read them all. I keep close tabs on those likes. Keep those coming as well. Click through, like, subscribe, leave one of those awesome comments. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.